I'm William, a developer advocate at OneSignal. And in today's video, I'm going to walk you through getting started using our Flutter SDK for both Android and iOS. Let's get into it. Go ahead and create a new project. Select Flutter and click Next. Give your project a name, making sure you use Snake Case. Go ahead and input a description for your project. The organization is your bundle identifier, so make sure this is something that you're comfortable with. For my project, I'm going to use Objective-C for iOS. You can use Swift though. Go ahead and click Finish. Okay, now that the project is created, go ahead and open your pub spec file and at the bottom of dependencies, add one signal flutter. We're using version 3.3.0 today. Go ahead and click the pub get button to pull down all of your flutter packages now. Okay, once you've gotten them, go back to main.dart and import one signal. And we can go ahead and pre-initialize one signal. I'm just gonna copy and paste some code. Now log in to your Firebase console and add a new project. Go ahead and give it a name uh, that's memorable for you and click continue. All right, now that the project is complete, go ahead and click continue. Open up your project settings, that's the gear icon, and select the second tab, Cloud Messaging. This is the information you're gonna need for the next step. And create a new app. Give it a name that's memorable for you. And we're going to select Google Android. Uh, this is the easiest, easier of the two to set up. Enter your Firebase server key and sender ID. Uh, if you have that tab open, you can just copy and paste it over. For this, go ahead and select Flutter and click Save and Continue. And you'll notice that you get back your app ID. We're gonna copy this and uh, put it into our Flutter project now. Okay, at this point, we need to go to the OneSignal Flutter setup guide to get a build script uh, that we can copy into the Android portion of our uh, project. So go ahead and open build.gradle. Make sure you select the one that's Android slash app. Just paste it at the top of the file and save it. Okay, at this point, we should be good to go to test this out on the emulator. Once the app starts, I'm just going to interact with it a bit just to show that it's working correctly. Okay, now that we've established that it's working correctly, we're gonna go back to the OneSignal dashboard and send a test notification. To do that, go to push and I'm gonna duplicate my push message, but you can create a new one. As you can see, because I've duplicated this, it's already filled out for me, so I'm mostly just scrolling through for your sake. Click review and send, and uh, now the notification should be sent to the emulator, so let's go back. All right, you see it's there at the top. Here we are. If I click it, it's going to take me to one signal as I've specified in the configuration of this notification. All right, let's do iOS now. So I'm gonna open up the X, works, X workspace file. Uh, I'm just going to uh, the finder to open that up. 
Once Xcode is open, uh, you're going to want to go to File and add a new target. And for this, we're going to do a notification extension. All right, so this needs to be named a very specific name. Uh, it needs to be called One Signal Service Notification Extension. Go ahead and click Finish, and you can cancel uh, this pop-up that pops up. All right, now I'm going to update the deployment to version 12 of iOS. And this is because rich text, or, or rich text isn't supported in iOS versions under 10. What you just saw me do is update the version number uh, to be the same as the runner. If this isn't the same, the project will fail. I'm back in Android Studio to open up the pod file. And I'm just going to go down to the bottom and insert a snippet of code that I pulled from the SDK uh, setup guide. CD into your iOS directory and run pod install to pull down uh, the latest dependencies for OneSignal. And go back to Xcode and open up your notification service extension implementation and paste in the source code that you can find on the docs. Here you can see I'm just starting the application and uh, we're gonna get it launched on my device. All right, the build succeeded and I'm just gonna allow notifications and interact with the app a bit just to prove that it's working. Okay, now let's create a new push notification and I'm gonna duplicate my previous one. Scroll down to the platform settings and you'll see that there's an option to send to iOS. Go ahead and enable that. Now let's send this and see what happens. All right, I have it where you can see both my screen and the, my phone, and I've just sent a notification. And as you can see, I have the notification here, and if I tap it, it opens up the website, just like Android. <laughs>